Studying your Bible is one of the most important things that a human being can engage in. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know where to begin. Well, this video would be a good start. On this next couple of videos, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to help you study your Bible, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Let's get to it. Praise the Lord. Over the next couple of Bible studies, I hope to show you some uh, tricks, tricks, tips, whatever you want to call it, to study your Bible. Now, you know the scripture says, study to sow thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And some, some folks will grab their Bible to take a look at it and literally not know where to begin. Um, if you find yourself starting in the first, like you do most books, you might not make it through Genesis, especially if you get to the names parts of the Genesis. Um, some people are not aware of even what the Old and the New Testament are divided by, and that would be the death of Christ, the Old Testament and the New Testament. A lot of people don't understand the differences between the Old and the New Testament. So a lot of these things I'm going to answer. In fact, I've got a list of things that I want to answer in the next couple of Bible studies. First of all is how to study the Bible. Second is, which is the best Bible to study? What references are useful and the best to use? Uh, when is the best time to study the Bible? Which books of the Bible should I study first? How is the Bible even laid out? And how can I avoid making common mistakes when reading the Bible? Amen. Well, the first part of this is how to study the Bible. And let me go ahead and give you some scripture on the beginning of this. The first scripture is Colossians 1.9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with all the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So there are a couple of things that we can get from this verse in First Colossians. First of all, for this cause also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease, for ye, cease to pray for you, and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. They want them to have a couple of things. First of all, they want them to know the knowledge of his will. We want to know what God wants. We want to do the things that God wants us to do. The other thing he says, that you be filled with all spiritual knowledge. Now, the Bible says that the spiritual things the world can't receive. Only those who are filled with the Spirit will be able to understand and see the things that are going on in this world. And there is an other overtone to all the scripture. And the first one is, since we, the day we left you, do not cease to pray for you. Now, if I was to break down all of the things that I know about learning the Word of God, the most important of all of those things is prayer. Let me give you another scripture. And that would be James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be. There it is again. Let him ask of God. If you want to know the Word of God, the first thing you'll have to do is try to get to know the author the author, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Word manifested in the flesh. All of the Word was what Jesus was. So if you want to get to know the Word of God, you'll have to get to know the Son of God, who is the Word incarnate. Amen. Now, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I know that sometimes I must sound like a broken record because I keep saying kind of the same things over and over. But try to take into consideration that if I am saying the same things over and over again, it's because they need to be heard and obeyed. We need to obey the Word of God, not just hear it. 122 says it best, Be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Notice that there's a caveat here as well. If you are a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, then you are deceiving yourself. Amen. You need to be a doer of the word. 
I've developed an idea of the lifestyle, or the, not the lifestyle, but the life cycle of a Christian. It goes something like this. The life cycle of a Christian is very close to Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, where Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So that, 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 that commandment goes into really four phases. If you were to take that commandment and boil it down to its essence, you'd have four words. Go, teach, baptize, and teach. As a Christian, you need to learn. In in this case, in salvation, you need to learn who Jesus is. Amen? He's one. There is one God. His name is one. Amen. You need to repent of your sins. Repentance is like his, his death. You need to be buried in the name of Jesus Christ, not just in titles, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you will then receive what you're after, and that is the new life. You're after that new life. That's what you'll get once you repent, once you're obedient, and you know who Jesus is. So the life, the life cycle of a Christian is very simple. You learn, you do, and then you move on. The problem with a lot of people is they learn, but then they don't do. And they're not happy because the Bible says, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. And they end up falling away for whatever reason, because they do not obey the word of God. You see, I can tell you a Bible study is useless unless you walk away from that Bible study with a new plan, with something that perhaps you've never done before. And don't ever think that just growing in Christ is going to be an easy thing. It's going to be painful at times. It's going to be hurtful at times. But the joy at the end is worth any of the pain in the middle. Well, that's a little long for this one, so let's get another one in by tomorrow, and I hope to meet you then. Please share this with somebody who you think uh, might need it. And if you ever do it like a thumbs up, that actually helps things. So I appreciate when you help. God bless. God bless.